Crawford appears to plan to add children in Salt Lane St. Thomas to program. Opposition spokesman on education Damon Crawford is appealing to the program of advance through health and education path to add children living in Salt Lane, Morant Bay in St. Thomas to the program so they can receive help to attend school. Crawford made the appeal in a video on Thursday while he was conducting a walkthrough of the community. He hinted at the economic state of the community pointing out that the residents depend on the dump in St. Thomas to earn a living. The opposition spokesman, while making the appeal, queried why children in Salt Spring were removed from the program. We're just here with the summer department people in, and we want to know, could the children in this community not be added to the part program? And on what basis could they have been taken off the part program, stated Crawford. So I am making this video appealing to the path to come down to this community and analyze every single home in this community so that the children can participate in school, he added. Crawford stated that the children are missing school as they cannot access the benefits offered by PATH. They are not going to school for the necessary amount of time because most of them have not been given the opportunity to be on PATH. So I am making another call for PATH to come and register the children in this community so that they can get a reasonable chance, Crawford noted. According to the Minister of Labour and Social Security PATH is a conditional cash transfer program funded by the Government of Jamaica and the World Bank aimed at delivering benefits through cash grant to the most needy and vulnerable society. Mandeville Mayor Donovan Mitchell instructed attorney to write Central Member of Parliament Rhoda Crawford over alleged defamatory statements. Chairman of the Manchester Municipal Corporation Mayor Donovan Mitchell has instructed his attorney to write Central Manchester Member of Parliament MP Rhoda Crawford over a statement made on political platform two weeks ago. Mitchell, in addressing the morning sitting of the Manchester Municipal Corporation, said the comments related to funds allocated to the Knock Patrick Division are serious. He explained that following the death of Councillor Clean Francis in 2022, he discussed with local government minister Desmond Mackenzie how funds for the division would be spent. According to Mayor Mitchell, it was agreed that Ms. Crawford would recommend in writing how the funds were to be utilized. He read letters dated between November 2022 and May 2023, said to be signed by Crawford, requesting funds to be dispersed for Christmas work, debushing, wood rehabilitation, and social outreach in the Knockpatrick Division. When you try to defame one character and integrity, which is all that I am living for, I take it personal. Those are serious allegations. And uh, to blatantly say to a crowd to score cheap political points on those matter is really, really depressing. The 11th of November 2022, please provide funds for Christmas program. The funds are to be taken from the Christmas work allocation. It is in the writing and the signature of the member of parliament. November 11, 2022. Please provide funds for beautification project in the North Patrick Division under the signature of the Member of Parliament. My only thing on it says approve for implementation. Six million dollars road rehabilitation program for North Patrick Division. And this is May 8, 2023. Every step of the way. The funds from the North Patrick Division has been spent based on the recommendation of the Member of Parliament for Central Manchester, who was actually put in charge of the North Patrick Division. I find it very amazing that we will lose any political platform to malign people's character. Prosecution was unable to prove soldiers in Keith Clarkley's were shooters. The three Jamaica Defence Force JDF soldiers charged in connection with the May 2010 shooting death of businessman Keith Clark were yesterday found not guilty after the prosecution was unable to pinpoint them as the shooters. Lance Corporal Greg Tingling and Odell Buckle, along with Private Arnold Henry, were being tried on murder charges for the May 2010 shooting death of the businessman. The men were freed after Justice Dale Palmer instructed the seven-member jury to return a not guilty verdict after ruling that the men did not have a case to answer. The Crown has several ingredients to establish 
but one of the essential ingredients to establish is that of identification of the person alleged to have taken the lives of the deceased. But the evidence in relation to the identification remains below the standard that is required for me to call upon defendants, he noted. He said the Count's case consists mostly of circumstantial evidence and taking together these bits of evidence have fallen short below the legal standards. He noted that Clark's widow and daughter, who were present with him when he was shot, were unable to identify the men except to say that they were soldiers. Pointing to the evidence that Clark had received 16 fatal shots in his back, the judge said that the jury, properly directed, could be satisfied that the intention was to kill the victim or to cause serious bodily harm. Keith Clark is dead. The shooters intended to kill him or to cause serious bodily harm when they shot him 16 times in the back and that there was no lawful excuse, he noted. Clark, a 64-year-old accountant, was shot multiple times inside the master bedroom of his Kirkland close home on May 27, 2010, during a police military operation to apprehend then-fugitive drug lord Christopher Duduskog. Dr. Rio, the former chief forensics pathology in the legal medical unit at the Ministry of National Security, testified during the trial that Clark sustained 25 gunshot wounds. He noted that 16 of these shots were to Clark's lower back, while the other injuries included gunshot wound to his face, chest, and forearm. The forensics pathologist explained that Clark died from traumatic shock caused by extensive damage to his lungs, heart, intestine, and kidney, resulting from the multiple gunshots to his back. Roger also stated in the account given by Clark's relative that he was shot while climbing down from a closet with his back towards security force personnel who had entered his home. Clark's widow and daughter had also insisted they were home alone with the businessman when they heard strange sounds and thought criminals were breaking into the house. Among the other evidence was testimony from Mahatan Williams, who commanded the JDF unit involved in the incident and testified that the neural video captured during the operation saw the soldiers acting in what is believed to be good faith. With Williams, that video depicted the soldiers coming out of the attack from insurgents in St. Clark's resident and that they followed standard military procedure. He also stated that the JDF had relied on intelligence which led them to the premises and that the team came under fire while approaching Kirkland's close. Captain Kevin White, second in command at the Special Activities Regiment, also testified that the firearm and ammunition logbook for May 2010 could not be found. However, White disclosed that he was able to locate dispatch books from earlier and later periods, ranking from early as 2004 to early 2010 and from 2016 to 2020. King's Counsel Peter Champion and Attorney at Law Jordan Hammett represented Buckle, while King's Counsel Valerie Robertson and Attorneys at Law Kemar Robinson and John Mark Reed represented Tinglin. Attorney Linton Gardner and his son, Obika, represented Henry. Senior Deputy Director of Public Prosecutions, Jeremy Taylor, KC, led the team for the prosecution, which included Deputy DPP Latoya Bernard and Count Counsel Dwayne Green. Remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.